Welcome inside Maureen Hendricks Stadium for tonight's Nieces Soccer Action. The Maryland Bobcats once again host the Chattanooga FC. A battle of one and two in the Nieces standings. Chattanooga entering today's contest having played eight contests with a win-loss record of 6-2-0. and zero. Undefeated so far, the only team to have that claim and 20 points on this young season. For the Maryland Bobcats, they come in on a one-game winning streak with a 4-0-2 record and 12 points, their most recent loss coming against this Chattanooga side. Let's begin with the starting lineups today. First for the visitors, coached by Rod Underwood. In goal will be Gene Antoine, number 15, the rock-solid starter for, the, for Chattanooga. He's only allowed one goal so far this young season. On defense, it'll be Aiden Bowers, Richard Dixon, the captain, Joseph Perez in the blue hair, and Anatoly Prepolita, the Moldovan national wearing number 97. At midfield, another four spot will be Lionel Alvarenga, Luis Garcia Sosa, Kelvin, Kelvin Mwape, and Colin Stripling. Two up front for Chattanooga will be Juan Luis and Marcus Nagelstad, the Norwegian wonder from Kirsten Sand, Norway on the North Sea, which is located in the south of Norway. If you sail southeast, you hit Denmark. If you drive northeast, you hit Oslo. Starters for Maryland in goal will be the starting goalkeeper of all the matches so far. Alex Sutton wearing the number one. Had a great assist in the last game on a great long ball for Nicholas Lacoulias first of the season. We'll see if he can replicate that. Philip Burnett, number 34, will be back in the starting lineup. He's at the defense with Richard Forca, Abdella Mansour, and Elmer Villatoro. In the midfield, it'll be another three for Josilin Pusayan, the team captain wearing the number eight, Pierre Richard and Andrew Wyvel, a goal scorer last time out against the LA Force. Three up front for Maryland will be Darwin Espinal, number 11, Nicholas Lacoulia, number 10, and Malik Tom, number seven. Bobcats are coached by Alex Cow in his first season. Last time up between these two teams, it was a solid matchup, largely backline to backline work with occasional brilliance needing to be displayed by both keeper Sutton and Antoine. And it was a Marcus Nagelstad free kick from 20 yards out that separated the two sides off a foul from Wivel at the edge of the box. Alex Sutton managed to get a touch on it, but that touch was not enough to stop the shot. Alex Sutton had several, several major chances as well to keep the score close, including two in quick succession in the 77th minute off a corner kick and then off of a rebound. Malik Tom looked good, and he had a good look in the 17th minute, but Andrew Weibel shot it high in the 43rd minute. Jack Villatoro got roughed up a couple of times by Chattanooga on defense, so he had a couple of hard fouls as he starts here on the near side as Maryland will go left to right across her screens, and Chattanooga will be going right to left across her screens. Wind is in the face of the Maryland Bobcats as we start off today's contest. It is a good crowd on hand. I am excited to be part of this. Number one and number two, we're off here from Maureen Hendricks Stadium. Let's have some fun, why don't we? Long ball and one quickly. Juan Luis is the one who heads it out of play. Maryland will get possession. Elmer Villatoro will be the one to throw it in. We're just getting going on this Saturday night in Maryland. Yet another beautiful night. It has been two beautiful nights in a row after a couple of weather-related issues have plagued the Bobcats' home half of the season. Chattanooga's backline defense. Aiden Bowers will be on the near side, along with Richard Dixon, the captain, wearing the red armband as he had the ball there. And Bowers leaves it off for Antoine. Here's Prepolita, the one with the black, looks like a, just, it looks like just wrist tape from here. Handing it off for Bowers once again. First minute of action in this young season. Chattanooga and Maryland, this is going to be their second of three meetings between the two sides. The next meeting will come back here at Maureen Hendricks Stadium later on in the season to be specific. It will be July 19th, but that'll be it for meetings between these two sides. So curious to see if Maryland can hold home field and steal some points in the bracket. Pass up ahead for Luis, finding the running legs of Joseph Perez, who has the ball taken away from him. Malik Tom boots it long, and it ends up right at the Maryland bench for a throw in for Chattanooga. 
Perez, very identifiable with his Chattanooga blue hair. Has the ball at the midfield stripe, back for Anatoly Prepolita. Head now, Nagelstad, his first touch of the contest, finds a good long ball to the opposite side of the field. Joseph Perez cutting to the middle. That's Mwape. Back to the lack line once again. Chattanooga threatening early here. Keeping it along the far side. Sutton surveying the scene from deep in his box. Sees his defense pull the ball away. Laculia making a good run at it. Unable to reach, reach get around Bowers. And Bowers taken down. A foul is awarded on the play. Nicholas Laculia once again utilizing that speed to force decision making from his opponents. He was very good at that in the Los Angeles force game. As that's way too far away from the foul spot. That's more like it. Perez somehow got that one around the Coolia. Back for Bowers. Prepolita on that last pass for Bowers. Prepolita from Chisianu, Moldova, which is the Moldovan capital. He appeared for the Moldovan national team in 2019's qualifiers for Euro 2020, which had to be delayed until 2021 because, you know, gestures in the general direction of everything. He debuted in a 1-0 loss for Andorra. He spent parts of four seasons in Europe with the Moldovan Super League, our various teams, as he has the ball once again. He spent a brief spell during the pandemic in Latvia for FK Spartak's Jermala. His most recent team before coming to America was FC Balti in the Divizio Nacionala in Moldova's Super League. This pass comes along for Juan Luis. Luis, one-on-one -on -one with... Malik Tom gives it off, and Josilin Fusayan forces a pass. It is ruled in favor of Chattanooga for possession. Early goings here, Chattanooga having the lion's share of possession. That throw-in is short, and it ends up right at the feet of Josilin Fusayan, who at first touch gives the ball away. And Chattanooga content to play with possession and not try to force anything through Maryland's midfield. Perez back for Bowers, back for Prepolita. Luis Alvarenga back for Luis and Perez once again. All the way across, Kelvin and Wape. First man on him is Philip Burnett. Into the box, losing possession. Darwin Espinal will take it the other way for the Bobcats. Turning back to find Burnett. Burnett is harassed off the ball. And Chattanooga wins possession once more. Burnett does well to get the ball back. Espinal, looking over some options, runs into two players. And Nagelstad taken down. A foul is awarded. Chattanooga a chance for a free kick from a little bit beyond 40 yards. Here's a chance for Chattanooga to test Alex Sutton. They have yet to get a ball into the sixth yard. As we'll see what Rod Underwood's got in mind here. As our match referee Ryan Nee will walk off the mandatory 10 yards to stand away from the ball. He's assisted on the lines by Ariel Raven and Richie Reyes. Our fourth official today is Rodrigo Hernandez calling for substitutions and stoppage time. And Wape and Alvarenga stand over this ball. A mass of players amass on the left side. Lived off for Mwape. Pass comes in, and Sutton right there to meet it. Alex Sutton had an assist in the most recent contest with the LA Force. A long ball pass finding Nicholas Laculia right at the start of the second half. Able to make the margin 2 nothing at the time. Pass from Villatoro, and Villatoro is tackled hard behind the play, and Maryland supporters are not going to be happy that that one was missed. In fairness to the referee, Ryan Nee, the ball was on the other side. Pass could not get through to Espinal as it was blocked. Espinal puts it back in for Pierre Richard. Richard back for Richard Forca. Forca, four-man sore. The two men steady at the back line. 
Malik Tom in the middle of the field. One touch back to him. Tom now looking to create, make some room. Burnett cuts to the middle of the field and taken down. Espinal cannot win the penalty, but the ball went last out off of Dixon, so it'll be a throw in for the Bobcats. A good breakup there by the CFC captain as Espinal looks a little slow to get back to regular form. Espinal far and away the shot leader for Maryland. He has 13 on this season, scoring on three of them, unless you also count own goals as the player's goal, in which case he scored on four of them. Espinal, one touch for Wyvel. That combination proved lethal in the LA game. Inside for Laculia, loses the header, and Villatoro pops it back up. Luis out ahead. Richard makes the header for Mansour. Mansour, not the most red cards, not the most yellow cards on this young season. He is second only to Alex McGrath of CFC. McGrath is not playing and not in the roster today, so his lead is likely safe for now. Espinal runs it down at the touchline. And last off of Chattanooga, a throw in. Burnett will do the honors. Philip Burnett, an in-season signing for the Maryland Bobcats out of Liberty University in, in Southern Virginia. Mansour surveys and finds Villatoro. Villatoro, looking to get around Luis, keeps his balance. Villatoro, waiting for options to develop, finds Laculia. Laculia is immediately surrounded by two men. Villatoro gets around one. Cross into the box, looking for Espinal over his head. And a header falls back for Jean Antoine. Jean Antoine from Jeremy Haiti, which is way west of Port-au-Prince, the national capital. He had 12 clean sheets in 16 matches with Cal United strikers in 2022 before transferring to Chattanooga. As Perez now has the ball. Preparlita finds Dixon, who finds it back for Bowers. Bowers finds Prepolita once more. Stripling, keeping it along the far touchline. Colin Stripling will pass it back for Bowers, and they'll just try to reset themselves here. Stripling is from Scotch Plains, New Jersey, which is south of Newark. He started in 26 of 28 games for Chattanooga last season, following a three-goal season with Stumptown AC in 2021. And it looks like Chattanooga's offside here. They are Juan Luis, the guilty party, as he tried to make a good run on a nice long ball to get over Maryland's midfield. Instead, it ends up being a turnover. The Bobcats will take the free kick. We thank you again for joining us from Marine Hendricks Stadium. We're just 10 minutes old in this contest. My name is Max Walpuff, and I am thrilled that you have chosen us to be part of your Saturday night entertainment. And on behalf of all of us here at the Maryland Bobcats FC, we thank you for joining us for tonight's contest. Perez for Dixon, Wyvel making a nice challenge. As a header goes off of Malik Tom last, Perez on the touchline will have the throw in. Perez, able to find the waiting feet of Alvarenga. Pass back for Dixon, and angles off of a body. Maryland will take the turnover. They have some numbers if they can move quickly. Richard finding Malik Tom. Malik Tom at the edge of the area, looking for options to develop and sends it off of Perez and out of play for the first corner kick of the match awarded to the home team. Darwin Espinal will head over to take the corner kick from here at the near side. Maryland setting up their attack and Chattanooga setting up their defense. It looks like Maryland will put six men in the box. A lot of guys in there for Chattanooga. Not a whole lot outside to cover Elmer Villatoro who gets the ball, puts it into the area, headed up. Nice spin and Laculia unable to get a foot on it. Forca pokes it along and ha angles off of Chattanooga. It'll be another corner kick. So Maryland will try again. 
The noises you hear are from the traveling supporters of Chattanooga FC. Having watched a couple of their matches from Chattanooga, they have a vocal and loud fan base who always makes their presence known wherever they are. Espinal puts up two hands. In comes the cross. It's low, and it's headed out of there. Along the touchline, Pusayan is going to run after it, and he will wait for it to go to the line and keep it in play. Here's Alex Sutton in the midfield. Long pass for Richard at the line. Back for Richard, looking to push forward, and Malik Tom cannot make the run to get past Perez, but Perez pokes it out of play. Here's Andrew Wyvel the opening goal scorer for Maryland in the last game against the LA Force. Elmer Villatoro, and uh-oh, this ball is a little long and Sutton has to run back for it. It was nearly a disaster for the Bobcats. Sutton, deep ball, looking for Laculia again. This combination turned into a goal in the last game. Nicholas Laculia breaking around, ba breaking around one. Gets the one touch right back for him, back for Tom, on the net, and the ball was tipped. Jean Antoine makes the stop before conceding the corner. Rolls it for Prepolita. Prepolita will find Stripling. One touch now for number 19, Luis Garcia Sosa. Two players go down. Ref Ryan Nee says no fouls were done, so we play forward. And Wape gets through the midfield, passes it backward. And Chattanooga now having a little trouble with this back line as Richard pokes it for Tom. Nikulia able to find Malik streaking down the wing. Looking to get around Perez. He does so to the end line, into the box. Header kept in the field of play. Richard keeps his foot up. And it's poked on goal for Antoine will take the ball and say it's time for a breather. Ending up at the feet of Perez. Richard wins the ball right back. Malik Tom back for Richard Forca. Forco found Espinal, who had, didn't have a whole lot of options, went back for him. Burnett making a deep run. Philip Burnett keeping it into the box. And a big shot, big save! Nicholas Laculia almost had one breakthrough as Aiden Bowers made the nice sliding block. Espinal playing defense and the back check. Back for Alex Sutton. Villatoro off his chest. He runs after it. Villatoro looking to get around the pink-clad boots of Juan Luis. And now comes for Abdella Mansour. Touchline for Villatoro. And bodied off the ball. Foul is given. A free kick from deep in the midfield third. On the Maryland side of midfield. So Villatoro, a couple of options for a direct play. Instead, he will hand it off for his captain, Poussaillon. Pierre Richard, one touch back for Poussaillon. Now finds the waiting foot of Alex Sutton, the Lafayette College goalkeeper. Sutton has plenty of big match experience, including two appearances in the Patriot League championship game, one of which he was on the bench for and was able to observe, the other he was a starter in. Both times, Lafayette College lost those contests. Ball falls for Mwape, finds Stripling, and Stripling can't get it past the defense of Darwin Espinal. Looking for options, Malik Tom running it down at the end line and checked off of the ball. Looks like it'll be a goal kick as it was last off of the pass of Espinal, and indeed it will be. As Jean Antoine will have a quick word for Joseph Perez. Antoine, keeping it short, finds Bowers. Maryland keeping a high press through the midfield. 
Their defensive line was all the way at midfield on that last goal kick. Here comes a long ball. Looking for Luis. Villatoro making the run. Passes it back for Sutton. Quick, deep and high as Perez is underneath it. Malik Tom challenged him. Villatoro it falls for. Bobcats has some space to create. Looking for Burnett, far side. Philip Burnett. Looking to keep a run down. Getting past Mwape, a long dribble. Finds a pass to the middle. Wyvel keeps it in his feet. Wyvel finds Espinal. The Coulia save made, rebound, poked aside. The ball will roll harmlessly out of play and Chattanooga keeping Maryland off the board. Huge blocks from Jean Antoine and from Anatoly Prepolita. Easily best chance of the game thus far coming in the 18th minute. It is a throw in for Perez. He turns it over to Villatoro. Cusayan back for Forca. Now finding Mansour. Nagelstad chasing him down. Haven't had to call his name a whole lot. Perez breaking free. Villatoro makes a move on it. Richard bodies off the ball and foul is awarded. Luis Garcia Sosa was the one who was judged to have been fouled by Pierre Richard. And it'll be a free kick for Chattanooga from about midfield. Aiden Bowers is the one standing over the ball. Bowers spent much of his youth with the Arsenal Academy in Ontario, California. He's from Murrieta, California, which is midway between Los Angeles and San Diego. Finding Luis. Alvarenga, Luis, one touch, two touch passing. Back for Alvarenga, and it's poked out of play. Wybell concedes the corner kick. And Chattanooga threatening on offense once more. Let's see what Chattanooga, the table toppers in Nisa, have drawn up here. Five men are in the box. A short corner option is, go is who it goes to in Sosa. Sosa keeping it along the end line. Into the box, Mansour sliding in, getting some help from a teammate. And a little miscommunication there for the Bobcats costs them. It'll be a throw-in. As instead of moving forward with numbers and possession, Maryland gives up the throw. Perez, the Anaheim, California native, will make the throw in. Foul away from the play, it looked like, and Maryland will have the ball back. Bill Toro finds Sutton. Nagelstad is the first one on him, nearly getting the block there as it goes just to the midfield area. Falling for Mwape. Prepolita. Taking it back, forced into making a decision as two men were surrounding him, able to find the release with his captain, Dixon. Mwape, hunting for options and not really finding a whole lot, ends up going back for Bowers at the defensive line. Prepolita, and back for Bowers. Luis, stepped on the ball, and manages to get around Tom. Cutting to the midfield, Luis searching for Nagelstad, finds the league's leading goal scorer, or tied for the league, that is. Mwape waits, keeps it on the outside of the area, and it looks like a player might have been offside, unable to play through it. It'll be a throw in here, wisely spotted by Richard Forca, noticing that Sosa was offside on the play, after coming back for the ball after the pass. Long throw in and up to challenge was Nagelstad. Ball finds Luis. Keeping it alive for Chattanooga. Stripling making a run. Deep in and Pusayan made the block. It'll be a goal kick. It went last off of Stripling. Nice block by Pusayan to get in front of the ball. Take all of it and have it go off of the man who hit it into him last. Not an easy play. Here's Mansoor. 
And Soar, a deep ball, hunting for Laculia. And it is just a bit far as it falls for Jean Antoine. The flags are waving, the drums are beating. We are 22 minutes old in this contest. It is a tie game between these two sides. It went tied into the half last time these two teams played in Chattanooga. And it took one free kick of brilliance from the Norwegian wonder Marcus Nagelstad before anybody was able to get through as this long ball goes a little too long. And Alex Sutton with a quick goal kick finds his backline partner in Mansoor. Ball along the grass. Richard ends up with it. Richard keeping it away. Finding Andrew Wyvel. Wyvel quick along the touchline. Jumps around Perez. Pass goes through Malik Tom. Back for Darwin Espinal, the team's leading goal scorer. Into the box, into the area, and taken away. Luis Garcia Sosa running out of there with it. And he's tackled hard. Referee is going to play the advantage. Two men are up for Chattanooga. Now reinforcements come. Dixon for Nagelstad. Quick pass back for Perez. Finding Luis. Juan Luis interchanging with a player, loses the ball, and he's fouled. Maryland's not happy about this, and a card is going to be shown away from the play to Jack Villatoro. So Elmer Villatoro gets a yellow card here in the 23rd minute. as Chattanooga now has themselves a free kick. This is a little farther away than where Nagelstad got the score in the last contest. But a yellow card shown here for Villatoro off a foul away from the ball. Apologies, Burnett is the one who got the yellow card. Nagelstad lines up over it with Mwape as Sutton organizes the three-person wall. Mwape runs behind it. Nagelstad, the free kick, and it's past the keeper. Corner, though. Sutton may not have needed to make that save. It, it looked like it was heading toward the post, but better safe than sorry, push it out of play and force the corner. After all, Maryland has done an admirable job thus far on corner kick defending. The short option is Mwape. There are four men I packed inside the six yard box. It goes for Mwape. Garcia Sosa, and he's one-on-one -on -one now R with Richard is Mwape. Poussayon is in support, Richard making the win, and he, last touch off of him, so it'll be a throw for Chattanooga. Over halfway through this first half, both teams have enjoyed a couple of decent looks, and the keepers Sutton and Antoine have been up to the task. Aiden Bowers holds on to the ball right now. The San Francisco State University product from D2, looking for his options. Bowers runs up, deep throw. Header won by Richard and booted out by Richard Forca. Wyvel bounces it down, appeals for handball, go unheard. Laculia making a run down the far side touchline. Laculia waits one on one. Shot on and over the bar. It took a tip. It looked like it did. Referee says otherwise, so it'll be a goal kick for Jean Antoine. Antoine opting to keep his goal kicks short, finding Prepolita. Back for Bowers. Prepolita. And Bowers again. Prep 
Crepolita waiting for something to develop, able to find someone, but it goes right back to him. Bowers trying his luck on his left. Able to break through for the men in white. And Wape. Keeping a line and headed out by Richard Forca. Falls for Luis. Juan Luis teaming up with Stripling. Colin Stripling manages to get around off the pass from Sosa. Luis back in. Got around the defense of the Bobcats. Nagelstad. On that more than capable right foot finds the pass. Sosa, edge of the penalty area. Has the ball. Takes it out. Takes it back in. Big shot on Forca. Pops it up into the air and concedes the corner out of play. After an initial run of play for Chattanooga in the early minutes, Maryland had a good a good fort push. Jean Antoine more than up to the task, though. Keep Maryland out. And now Chattanooga is having their chance at the runs. Five men in the box, one man short. What does Chattanooga have cooked up here? Nagelstad, edge of the area, has it out for Mwape. Mwape is one-on-one -on -one with Pusayan, finding the pass. Deep ball, and uh, that's going to get out of there. Rivel now with the header, after the great effort from Villatoro to get it out of the box. Perez and Chattanooga going in reverse to reset their attack. It's the captain, Dixon, all the way back for the keeper, Jean Antoine. Crepolita back for Bowers. It is a short bench today for Chattanooga. They do have a goalkeeper substitute, though, in Jonathan Burke, unlike some of the other teams that we've seen come through Maryland where they just bring one keeper. Here comes the run from Stripling. Espinal is back from his forward spot to mark him. Pass for Mwape. Finds into the box. Nagelstad, always dangerous. The shot, and it's blocked away. Prusayan doesn't get out of the zone, though. About 30 minutes have been played here from Maureen Hendricks Stadium, and Chattanooga is the one threatening here to score the first goal. But they are going in reverse now. Perez, surrounded by four Bobcats. Lacouli has got it for Pierre Richard. And Richard is surrounded, gives the ball away on a bad pass, but makes up for it by going after the ball and stealing it away. Espinal last touched off of Chattanooga, so a throw in for the Bobcats. Burnett lets it go wide of him, finds the pass for the keeper, Alex Sutton. Much calmer touch than his previous one, featuring the save on the Marcus Nagelstad free kick. That may have been going wide, but more than enough time in the game to touch it back. Tom gets it away from Dixon. Malik Tom making a deep run for it. He's bodied down. Espinal's got it. Darwin cuts into the box. Into the box once more, goes through the legs, and Prepolita boots it all the way up and out. Corner kick for Maryland. Espinal does not have to go far to get to that ball. He is the designated corner taker, at least in the absence of Abdul Kuistra, who has some corner kick taking experience, as Alex Cow on the near touchline gets some words from our fourth official, Rodrigo Hernandez. It's a packed penalty box. Espinal, in swinger, and into the side of the netting. That'll be a goal kick. Nobody had to touch that one. The Haitian goalkeeper now has it once again. Gene was actually a 2021 NISA champion with Detroit City FC, where he was teammates with Darwin Espinal and with Jimmy Feilerman, both of the Bobcats' current roster. Although I did find this interesting, Jean Antoine, his only Nisa red card came in a 2019 matchup against Albion San Diego in one of his four games for the team. Sutton has it. As Maryland trying to reset their attack. Stadium lights will start to take full effect right around the start of the second half as the sun is just going to our west, which is 
beyond the near side. Touched last by Chattanooga out of play. Andrew Wyvel will line up to throw it in. Finding Lakulia. Lakulia to the corner flag. And it bounces off of Chattanooga last. Corner for the Bobcats. Darwin Espinal, the Honduran striker, looking to create another chance. As this time, he'll try his luck from his offensive right side. It is a parking lot in that box. Espinal boots it in, finds the waiting feet of Nwape, and it's all the way out to midfield. Villatoro has some space to run, puts it back into the box. Jean Antoine makes the jump and the grab. Chattanooga moves it to midfield along the far side. Kusayan has it for Maryland off of the errant touch. The midfield leader and team captain sees this ball run back Elmer Villatoro runs it down Mansoor looking for Espinal taken away Garcia Sosa and this goes off of Espinal last quick throw in finds Perez and it's run back to Bowers and Prepolita center backs have been busy here for Chattanooga in the sense that they've Sort of had this going on for every couple of possessions. Colin Stripling makes a turn upfield. Finding Alvarenga. And Wape. Looking for something in the box. Can't find one there. Laculia comes back on defense to force a different decision here for Stripling. Dixon. As Wape gets around Burnett. And Forka prevents the ball from getting to Nagelstad. Burnett heads it off of one, and Chattanooga had to save that one. It was last off of Mwape. Would have gone for a goal kick. Garcia Sosa into the box, and no friendly feet are there for Chattanooga, as it is a goal kick on the wide shot. Sutton commanding his players to push up the field, and they will do so. As he drops back seven or eight yards or so, and lines up to boot it away. Low on the backspin, Prepolita using all of his size to get a hold of that one as Mansoor knocks down Nagelstad, and this will be a foul on Mansoor. It doesn't look like a card is coming out, as Nagelstad went down on the play. Nagelstad moved to the United States to start college. He first started at Division II University of Bridgeport, where he was All-America's second team in 2010. And he led the team in scoring both seasons with 15 as a freshman and eight as a sophomore. He then transferred to Providence College, where he had to sit out a whole year because at the time, transfer rules were not yet considered to be an antitrust violation. Don't worry, that would come later. So after a snake bit in 2013 season, where he had just two goals on 41 shots, Nagelsmann was able to break out and had a 10-goal season for in 23 games played to lead the Friars to the Big East Championship, where they, where they won. He had two goals in the tournament. And to the NCAA semifinals, losing to UCLA in double overtime 3-2. New York City FC actually drafted Nagelstad in the MLS Super Draft in the fourth round, but he didn't go, didn't sign with the club due to a lingering injury. As Villatoro, ball taken away and ends up three. Foul awarded in favor of the Bobcats as Luis Garcia Sosa, the one deemed to have brought down Villatoro, as limping off, favoring that right leg is Villatoro. Kusayan. For Villatoro. Finding Kusayan. Touchline and last off of Chattanooga. 
Alex Cow is right next to Elmer Villatoro for this throw in. Keeps it inside for Wyvel. Wyvel cannot get around Dixon. And a captain on captain collision there. Dixon goes down, and they'll rule a foul late. And that was an awfully late call by Ryan Knee. I do agree with the call, but it did come late. So anyway, after that captain on crap, captain collision, a quick, cor quick free kick is taken in. Perez teaming up with Garcia Sosa. Luis has it taken away. Now Laculia looking to create with his speed. One-on-one -on -one with Prepolita. Now he'll search for options to pass, and that pass was a little short to go for a teammate, and Wape with the steal. Aiden Bowers, a quick touch for Perez. And Laculia and Tom have done a really good job of forcing decisions by this Chattanooga backline, the same way they did in the contest against Los Angeles last Wednesday. As here is Anatoly Prepolita. Finding Garcia Sosa. Garcia Sosa tried the right side, didn't find anything. Tried the left side and has to go back to the defense. Wyvel forces the pass from Bowers to Prepolita. Now going to try for the long ball. Maryland is appealing for offside. They're not going to get it as Burnett and Richard team up to push Mwape back for Dixon. Stripling. Deep along, one-on-one -on -one with Tom. Finding Dixon. Back for Garcia Sosa. Falls for Stripling again. Stripling is one-on-one, -on -one, now two against one. Hussayan and Burnett team up to take the ball away. Deep at the far side, corner flag. Finding Philip Burnett. The one-time Liberty Flame will fire it out of there. Laculia can't get to the ball. Instead, it will fall for Malik Tom. Andrew Wyvel's got it. Darwin Espinal puts an arm up. He thinks he's open down the field. Assuming Wyvel can get the ball to him. Eventually the pass comes, but by this point, Darwin's space is much enclosed. Pierre Richard making a run now. Pierre Richard back for Darwin Espinal. For Elmer Villatoro. Espinal. Espinal makes his run and just oversteps the pass from Richard as this will be a throw-in for Chattanooga. Perez looking for options to develop. Finds one in Luis. Espinal all over the blue hair defender. Off of Pierre Richard last, and Chattanooga has to throw the ball in again. Garcia Sosa is held up by Richard, and yeah, you can't do that. Ryan Nee uh, proceeds to admonish Richard for the foul. No card has come out. A yellow card came out earlier on in this half. Philip Burnett, the guilty party. Perez making a streak down the line. Perez has some space, closed off by Fusai, and makes the pass for Juan Luis. Pass goes away, Richard able to nutmeg a defender, and back comes bo the Bobcats the other way. But the team's leading goal scorer on the charge stops, surrounded by three men, finding Pusayan to release. And Nagelstad and Pusayan go down and... Uh, oh boy, this does not look good. As Pusayan and Nagelstad collided, Nagelstad went down... So did Busayan. As Ryan Nee is going to head over to Rodrigo Hernandez to ask what did he see on the play. Not normal that you see a match referee go after the fourth official to ask what was seen. Perhaps getting a second opinion on discipline. Always good to have a second set of eyes watching the action. As it looks like it's just going to be a talking to for the Maryland captain. Yeah, it doesn't look like a, f a card is going to come out. As Nee is also going to talk to Nagelstad about it. 
And considering that the play is all the way up for in the Maryland's offensive half, it looks like Maryland's going to keep possession and have the free, have the free kick. Restart fast for Villatoro. There have been quite a few stoppages here in this first half as we approach the 43rd minute. I wonder how much stoppage time is going to be added here in this first half. Last off of Chattanooga, throw in for Maryland. Perez spins around and kicks it out, concedes another throw in, but prevents the offensive onslaught for a brief moment. Villatoro going around Luis. Villatoro finding a pass for Laculia. Laculia bodied off by Prepolita, and that's a foul at the edge of the penalty box. Anatoly Prepolita concedes the throw in, and here's the free kick now. Prepolita has played all eight games for Chattanooga. He has two goals and an assist. The six foot four Moldova side international as Michigan is up 1-0 over next week's opponent Savannah. Savannah will make their first of two visits to the Maureen Hendricks Stadium next week. They currently are losing to the Michigan Stars. Espinal and Fusayan stand over this one. Five person wall. Espinal puts it right into the wall, deflects on, and Antoine falls on top of it and makes the stop. Bowers finding Stripling for Bowers once again, and Prepolita has it. Malik Tom making a rundown on Alvarenga. Bowers able to find Juan Luis. Espinal back to mark him and now moves to Perez. Forces the play back. Dixon and Chattanooga in a strategic retreat for Bowers. Finds some room on the left side. Fusayan bodies off Luis and last off of Maryland. Entering the final minute of allotted time for this first half. Perez with another throw in on this near side touchline. Juan Luis. And this one went off of Villatoro last, and Villatoro is not happy about that one. One minute of stoppage time will be added. I'm a bit surprised it's only one as Maryland wins possession on this throw-in. Considering that there was a yellow card, multiple corner kicks, appeals for handball from the Chattanooga bench go unanswered as Villatoro sends it long, looking for Laculia and some body position won by Aiden Bowers. Foul on the play as Laculia and Prepolita go down hard. Both of them go clutching at their legs. And it looks like they'll be calling for medical attention. Prepolita and Laculia both go down. Laculia able to get up with some assistance from Mansoor. It looks like he's okay, so Maryland's physio is sent back to the touchline as Chattanooga's physio is taking a look at Prepolita. A yellow card is actually going to be shown here to Nicholas Laculia for the tackle that led to the collision. So Laculia and Burnett now both have yellow cards. Laculia is coming here in the first minute of stoppage time as I'm curious how much more time is going to be added in the discretion of our match official, Ryan Nee. Jean Antoine lines up. Boots it into the Maryland back line, goes over the leaping head of Juan, of Juan Luis, and Villatoro runs and stops it. That'll be the end of the first half. Both teams had incredible chances, but some good saves from Gene Antoine and Alex Sutton 
have the match scoreless at the half. We'll take a break. We'll keep the footage here so you can see what's going on, but I'll be back after I get some water. And it is a scoreless first half of Marine Hendricks Stadium. The number one and number two teams in the NISA table battling for position as Chattanooga makes their first of two visits to Maryland. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back for the second half. Back to Marine Hendricks Stadium for the second half of today's action. Chattanooga FC and Maryland Bobcats FC play to a scoreless draw in that first half. Players and referees are now back out of the locker rooms ready to begin the second half of festivities. Chattanooga and Maryland will switch sides. Chattanooga will be moving from left to right across your screens. And Maryland will be moving from right to left. Goalkeepers were definitely the big story of that first half. Alex Sutton didn't have a whole lot of saves that he had to make, but he definitely got tested on a couple of free kicks and corners. Whereas Jean Antoine definitely needed to be the best player at the back line for Chattanooga. He got tested a couple big time chances. Malikwis Laculia swinging and missing. Malik Tom having a good look at it. And Darwin Espinal with another nice tap pass looking for Andrew Wyvel. On top of that, a nice block from Aiden Bowers keeps the score sheet clean thus far. Not totally clean though. There are two yellow cards on the books. One for Philip Burnett and another. And another for Nicholas Laculia. All right, so Maryland making a halftime change. As Eunice Madad coming on to replace Malik Tom. Tom had a couple of interesting looks in that first half. Not a, nothing on net, but he had good possession. As Eunice Madad comes in, looks like they'll sub in a fifth midfielder with some offensive tendency, a fourth midfielder with some offensive tendencies and take out a striker. It doesn't look like there are any changes for Chattanooga as Maryland stands over the ball and gets us restarted. Let's have some more fun here from Boyd's Maryland. Richard Forca's got it. Family in attendance for Mr. Forca. Finds a pass for Abdella Mansour. Deep pass, Laculia bodied off the ball by Prepolita and Maryland looking for the shove and no shove coming. Ball is popped up in the air, an errant kick from Jean Antoine as Prepolita went down rather easy off the push from Madad. Pass from Richard is well long and out of play. Jean Antoine wins the goal kick. Antoine, the Haitian keeper, lines up. He was listed on the roster for the Haitian national team at one point, but was unable to compete in tournaments. As Antoine, a short kick here taken for Bowers, and Laculia gives him a run. Burnett and player go down. Foul is going to be awarded, going in favor of the Bobcats on the tackle. So Maryland a chance to set up their offensive attack here. As referee Ryan Nee is going to have some words with the Chattanooga players to have them come back to 10 yards away. Luis and Nagelsad make up the wall. As Espinal looks like he's going to be one to kick this one in. Right hand goes up. Ball comes in. Crosses low enough. Some feet get to it, but no shot on net. Wyvel can't keep possession himself. Finds some help with Madad. Ball is off of Perez. P appeals for handball. Go unanswered. Back for Bowers. Keeping it along for Perez. Perez finds the Garcia Sosa, who goes back to the captain Dixon for the Moldovan Prepolita. Nice takeaway for Maryland. Laculia with Wyvel. Finding, finding Villatoro. Villatoro along the line. Back inside. Wyvel. Wyvel to the box. And Bowers gets it off of him. And it goes off of Maryland. Oh, it goes here. Foul. It just looks like it can be awarded. Instead of the goal kick, it'll be a foul in favor of Chattanooga getting the ball. 
as Andrew Wyvel went for a shot. So Eunice Madad gets a little bit more time against Chattanooga. He was subbed into the last Chattanooga match in the 88th minute, this time coming on at halftime. So definitely a lot more minutes here for Mr. Madad after he made a good showing in the LA Force game. Forger with a ball into the midfield circle. It falls for Colin Stripling. Looking for Lionel Alvarenga. Lionel Alvarenga maintains his own website under lionelalvarenga.com. Although his links to his highlights with the Cal United Strikers are a little old. I should point out the Cal United Strikers, uh, their domain name was purchased by a Indonesian betting company. So something that someone at league offices probably should check on that because I'm not sure they want the former CalUnitedStrikers.com domain name to be an Indonesian b betting company. So just, you know. Something that someone at league officers should take care of. That's well above my pay grade. Anyway, multiple players go down here. As some claps are now as both players get up off the turf. It looks like it's going to be... His Ryan Nee looks like he's making a notation of some kind. I may have missed a yellow card. I do apologize. I was so wrapped up in my pregame notes talking about Lionel Alvarengo's website. I may have missed some of the action on the field. Eh, happens. That's the life of a broadcaster, ladies and gents. You don't get seven years of experience in this business without doing something wrong. <laughs> Jean Antoine has this one as Madad and... Laculia were unable to get this one further than him at the back line. Opting for a fake out of the long pass and checks it down for Bowers. Team captain Dixon goes back for him, back for the goalkeeper. So Alvarenga is the third player judged for the yellow card here. So I was kind of right to be talking about Mr. Alvarenga, but I was wrong in the sense I was talking about his website and not his play on the field that netted him a yellow card on a fa far side foul. Pierre Richard's got it for Maryland. Trust me, you don't get far in this business without making some mistakes. Some are bigger than others, and some warrant losing a job over, but other mistakes are the sort of things that you forget about and maybe get reminded by somebody who was listening at the time. Stripling's got it here for the throw-in as the fans give him a little bit of a harassment looking for him to do something with the ball as Alex Cow is imploring his back line to push Chattanooga's offense up by pushing up instead to keep the offside line. Garcia Sosa, one-on-one -on -one with Wyvel. A little help from Laculia now for Prepolita. Bowers indicating he'll go up the left side touchline. Indeed, he does. Juan Luis. Juan Luis gets around one. Abdelamansor boots it right into him. And it looks like a goal kick here for Sutton. As Mansour Howard served that one straight into a running Luis. And instead of conceding the throw in, it ends up working out better for the Bobcats, that is, as it ends up for a goal kick and some controlled possession. Here is the aforementioned Mansour. Finds Wyvel. One touch is too long for him to retrieve. Juan Luis will escort it to the touchline and keep it in play. Strong winds now blowing in the face of the Chattanooga players as they press up into the field. It's great flag-waving weather as Nicholas Laculia has got the ball. Laculia is one-on-one -on -one with Garcia Sosa. Pass back for Wyvel. Wyvel spins like a top around the ball, keeping it possession for Maryland. Liculia, back for the captain, Poussayan. Pierre Richard surveying the scene, going for Philip Burnett. Darwin Espinal, back for Richard Forca, two of the longer tenured members of the NISA organizations. Forca's been 
part of the Maryland Bobcats side since the NPSL days, popped up into the air as Madad unable to come down with the ball. Perez and Luis back for Bowers. Dixon, ball popped up and may have been a handball as he falls on top of it now. Foul is ruled on Laculia, so Chattanooga will have a chance to set up their attack. Prepolita. Wind has increased in speed since the start of today's action. I could feel it when I was stepping out of the press box to just get some fresh air as Perez comes in. Mwape finds Garcia Sosa. Takes a couple of bounces and falls for the Bobcats. Mansoor wound up for a big kick, but ends up just going on a pop-up. Foul is called on Wyvel for a push in the back, and Dixon went down on that play. Both teams have earned themselves yellow cards on somebody. Burnett and Laculia for the Bobcats. Alvarenga for, the, for Chattanooga, and... That's kind of it for notes thus, thus far. It's been a lot of saves and a lot of backline to backline. Definitely some high quality chances for both teams. As here's a deep free kick for Chattanooga. Garcia Sosa runs around the ball and back for Perez. Bowers. Deep now for Mwape. His header goes long into the touchline off of Chattanooga last. Maryland will maintain control deep in their own end. Longtime viewers of the Bobcats this season will remember back to the first game of the season, the wind played some tricks on that ball deep into the night against Flower City. Wonder here, and it looks like they're going to rule the foul instead of a throw-in, so Sutton is going to line up deep away from his crease to take it. As the wind picks up here, you wonder how much of that might play tricks on both of these teams. Deep ball, Laculia and Prepolita battling for position. Richard, header, over for Espinal. It's too long for him to take a reach at it. As just trying to figure out which of the ball boys is going to throw as Stripling is well too far away from where the ball went out of play. Don't necessarily see referees call players on that often enough, as players tend to have free reign to at least walk like 10, 20 feet from where the ball came. Turn over here, finds Madad, the halftime sub, on for Espinal. Espinal spins it into the box, it ends up off of a Chattanooga player and out of play for a corner. First corner of this second half for Maryland. Three men are going to look like they're going to stay out of the box here for the Bobcats as everybody for Chattanooga comes into the box to defend. The offside line is at the post. Into the box and headed up and out of play. We will do it over again. Into the box. Into the goal! Espinel's free kick hits a man in the box and it bounces past Antoine. It's one, nothing, Bobcats. I am not sure who got last touch on that one as Jean Antoine is gonna come all the way to the fourth official to ask for something. And he's, in, he's pleading for something. It looked like it went off of Antoine's hands last as I get a look at the delayed feed that we have here in the booth. Play is restarted. I am still taking a look at the delayed feedback here, trying to see what happened on that last play and keep up with the current action. 
it looked like Antoine actually got the last touch on that one. He may have been trying to say he didn't touch it. Man, that's, that's a brutal play to give up the goal. As Maryland gets the one nothing advantage here off a set piece. We're still trying to sort out the effects of that last goal. As it looks like it's going to be officially ruled as Espinal's goal. It didn't go off of a Maryland player in the box. It did. As foul at the midfield line, Maryland now playing with the advantage here. Near side touchline to the corner kick taker, Espinal. Entering now the 59th minute and now almost the 60th minute of action. Deep in, Forca chests it down, winning possession. Touch pass for Richard. Richard gets around a defender. Richard running past some players and he's taken down hard by Prepolita. Foul is awarded there. Yeah, that was a little late. Anatoly Prepolita, you can't do that. Chattanooga is definitely not used to this. They are playing from behind in this contest as Prepolita judged for the foul. Here in the 60th minute, Maryland has themselves a 1-0 lead off of a Darwin Espinal corner kick that it looks like he was the last Bobcats player to touch. It seemingly went off of Jean Antoine last as far as the replays that I could see up here on the delayed feed that we have in the booth. But I will withhold judgment on whether it was an own goal or not. Espinal puts it into the box, spun out again. Perez puts it right into the back of a Bobcats player. And this one's taken all the way to the corner flag. It's one against two. Don't normally win these battles. And indeed, it'll be a goal kick for Jean Antoine. Chattanooga has the best goal differential, and that would come to make sense for the team with the best record. They have a plus 12 now live as Maryland got the first goal in this contest. As now you start to see what Chattanooga might be made of here as they're playing from behind. Jean Antoine puts the goal kick long. Juan Luis heads it back for Nicholas Laculia. Probably not the intended target. Just a guess. Laculia cutting into the box. He's surrounded by three Chattanooga players. Back out once again. Richard making a run in the box. Cross tried to come in for him, but it bounced off of a defender. Juan Luis has it. Hussain keeping his hands up and away from the play and able to take the ball away without it going out of play. Mansoor back for Alex Sutton to calm things down. Burnett misses the header, and Maryland resets their defense. Espinal comes back to take away Mwape's decision-making. Stripling, back for Garcia Sosa, finds Prepolita, who gets her around Wyvel looking for Dixon. Chattanooga, the only unbeaten team in Nisa so far this season, at six wins, two draws, and no losses so far. Jean Antoine has conceded his second goal of the season as a hard foul, a hard tackle it just looks like, no foul. Espinal gets away from pressure. Maryland's fans are imploring the team to be quicker with the ball as Laculia waits for support. Now with the lead, Maryland's fans are emboldened as Attempting to make a run was Eunice Madad, and unable to save it, Jean Antoine will have the goal kick. Takes it fast for Prepolita. Need to get up the field through Garcia Sosa. Finding Stripling. Chattanooga's substitutes are all off the bench and warming up. I wonder which of them will come in first. Whether they push for adding a forward potentially strengthening their midfield. Finding Alvarenga. Alvarenga, middle of the field, looking for options. Finds Garcia Sosa, looking for Juan Luis. 
Juan Luis is in the box. Perez, deep ball, and it goes well over the heads of everybody. And out of play for the goal kick. Alex Sutton, the Manhattan-born keeper, will have it. Okay, so we have just gotten official word up here in the booth that it is Maryland's goal in the 57th from Darwin Espinal, unassisted. They are going to rule it's his goal. Okay, then. Darwin has his fourth of this season to pull one behind Marcus Nagelstad and Ignacio Lopez from Club de Leon, who has just come in like a ball of fire in this league. He's played three games for Club de Leon and has five goals. Granted, two of those games were against the same team in Albion San Diego, so remembering it's a small sample size and it's a young season for him. As Busayan bounced the ball off of Prepolita, they will rule that it is Maryland's ball here as a yellow card is going to be shown. Looks like to Anatoly Prepolita, even though it was referee was nowhere near him when he made the presentation. Rod Underwood having words now with Rodrigo Hernandez, our fourth official on the sideline. As Darwin Espinal talking things over with match official Ryan Nee. Espinal has a survey of the scene of who's in the box. In swinging corner, in swinging free, kick goes well out of play. Jean Antoine will get a new ball, and we will continue action here in the 65th minute. Maryland has the lead off a 57th minute strike from Darwin Espinal off of a corner kick. Perez looking for Stripling, able to find him and get around the defender. Forca taking the ball away from Nagelstad. Nagelstad's been relatively isolated in this contest. Maryland's defense has kept the ball away from the Norwegian striker. Espinal at the touchline and cleanly taken away as Espinal kept his balance off the tackle from number five, Colin Stripling. Juan Luis as Nagelstad makes a run on Forca. Juan Luis makes the run on Mansour and Villatoro. Headed out by Burnett, right into the waiting foot of, of Garcia Sosa. Mwape, hunting for options. Mwape, once again, nutmegs the defender. Nagelstad scores! Great passing sequence, and Nagelstad has his sixth goal of the season. We're tied at one. into the 67th minute of action, and we're back square at one. As it looks like a couple of players are gonna get set for Maryland to come in. Chattanooga and Maryland will reset themselves. Maryland's got the ball, they're ready to go. As soon as Chattanooga gets on their side of the halfway line, it looks like we'll get going. As perhaps a substitution is gonna come on here in a few minutes. As it looks like Sam Solomon is the one ready to come in for Maryland. Who he'll be replacing, we will tell you shortly. Maryland's got the ball on this restart. Tied at one now. Burnett for Forca. Getting a slide for Pierre Richard. Mansour, Juan Luis making a deep run for him as now Chattanooga seems emboldened after that last goal. And Wape along the line keeps it. Nagelstad. Nagelstad and Forca battling for position. Nagelstad loses control. Poked free. And it Maryland wins the ball. Looks like we'll have a call for substitutions here. As Sam Solomon is getting set to come on to replace Nicholas Laculia. So 
So Solomon and Madad have come on as substitutes for Maryland. Yet to see a substitute for Chattanooga. Sam Solomon. This is going to get credit for a, for his effort to lead to Prusayan's second goal of the season against Flower City, but he, without his rundown, Prusayan does not win that ball and does not score that goal. Solomon entered into the most recent game against the LA Force also as a substitute. As he makes his way into the field with his identifiable pink boots. Juan Luis. Juan Luis looking to utilize his speed, getting around a couple of defenders. Man goes down in the box. Nagelstad, ball falls, makes big block by Forca. Falls for Garcia Sosa. Keeping it dangerous here. And Wape into the goal. Chattanooga's up 2 1. Kelvin Mwape finds his way onto the board. That is his third goal of this season. Again, incredible passing on Maryland's right, left side of defense and Chattanooga's right side of offense. As it looks like Alex Sutton is going to call a meeting here for Maryland's players. As it looks like a yellow card has also been shown to Gene Antoine. Antoine came all the way out of his box to the corner flag to celebrate the goal as Antoine has been shown yellow here. So this could prove to be something here in the 70th minute as the backup goalkeeper is Jonathan Burke for Chattanooga and should, should Antoine do something unadvised and get a second yellow, uh, they would have to turn to Burke for his first minutes of action in this season. Burnett and Richard as Maryland restarts play. Now down 2-1 after starting off 1-0 here in the second half. Pusayan gets it between defenders. Ball is ruled to have potentially been played by a hand ball. As the ball roll, rolls out of play and they got to get a ball back. And Pusayan takes the corner, takes the free kick. Forca for Mansour. In case you're wondering, the, the Maryland bench does not have that many defensive substitutions today as Juan Luis. Yeah, that's definitely a foul. You cannot do that. Juan Luis. Looks like he might be shown yellow here too. Yes, indeed. He is shown yellow. So now that's three players on Chattanooga to have been shown yellow. Antoine, Prepolita, Alvarenga, and here the fourth, Juan Luis. I wonder how much of this is going to play into the, the thinking here for Chattanooga as they are likely score effects wise going to be stuck playing some defense here in the final 20 minutes of action. One of their strikers, one of their midfielders, one of their defenders, and their goalkeeper, all on yellows. Alex Cow now showing some instructions for his back line with his alternate captain, Richard Forca. It looks like Manuel Gonzalez and Mohamed Conte are lining up to come in next at the next possible opportunity. Mohamed Conte is the only defensive substitution listed for the Bobcats today. Bobcats have already made two subs, so now it looks like they'll bring on two more as Chattanooga, they're still rolling with their starting 11. As Mohamed Conte looks like he's gonna come on now, potentially to replace the injured player. Mohamed Conte has come on, and Maryland's likely not going to take any chances here. As it looks like Wyvel is going to come off as well in favor of Manuel Gonzalez. The 
Gonzalez will slot nicely into that midfield as Wybell is greeted by high fives as he comes back to the bench. Espinal, the free kick, deep into the box. Looking for Mansoor, the header goes up and over the bar. It looks like it'll be a corner for Maryland at will. Last touched by Chattanooga. And a player is down in the box for Chattanooga. I wonder how many, uh, three goals and a lot of stops or fouls and some tackles. Wonder how many of these minutes are going to be added on in stoppage. Although granted, Rodrigo Hernandez only added a single minute of stoppage time in that first half, despite multiple long pauses. Corner kick now getting set. This is how Maryland scored their first goal of the contest. Granted, it was on the opposite side. Outswinging corner here. Conte can't meet it with the header. First touches for Madad, and he's fouled. And this will be another free kick given away. Another seemingly needless foul by Chattanooga. And while Gonzalez puts it at its spot at the edge of the midfield third. We're three quarters of the way through this 90 minute contest. Espinal Gonzalez standing over it as Gonzalez puts it into the box. Headed out of there by Prepolita. Well rising by the 6-4 Moldovan. Solomon a shot, bounces up, punched out of the air by Gene Antoine. Rolled off his knuckles and out of play. It'll be a corner kick and Espinal returning to the spot where he got the goal. Looks like Elmer Villatoro is being escorted along the goal line as Espinal puts it in. Prepolita meets it with his diving header. And Gonzalez puts it into the box. Maryland's offside, though. So ball's got to come all the way back as Nagelsai claims he couldn't hear the whistle as he tried to go forward with the ball. And looks like Gene Antoine is going to be the one to restart play off the free kick. So two of Maryland's players that were, so Maryland has now made th three substitutes, make it four actually, Villatoro, Wyvel, Laculia, and Tom all off. Conte meets this one with a header. Giving it away to Prepolita. Most recent goal scorer, Kelvin Mwape. And it came off of him last, giving away back to Maryland. Espinal loses control of the ball deep at the touchline into Chattanooga's bench and will go for the team in white. Our next home matchup will be next Saturday night, July, June 10th, against Savannah Clovers FC, who are currently in action against the Michigan Stars and trailing 1-0. to zero As the team from Pontiac looks like they're going to find their way into the winner's circle tonight. Chested down, and Wape, stripling, looking for Dixon. Pierre Richard unable to take it away. Garcia Sosa, and balls out of play. A throw in for Maryland deep in their own end. So Maryland has utilized one of their fo two forward substitutes, and Solomon goes after it and bodied off the ball and hit hard. It looks like it'll just be a throw in for Maryland. And they keep possession, but they probably would have liked that to go against Chattanooga on the foul. Busayan has a little bit of space moving. Makes it in for Gonzalez. Gonzalez, a deep ball, and it's not as wide as you might have thought it was going. The wind was pushing that ball in toward goal from the initial strike to the far right post as Chattanooga's, one of Chattanooga's substitutes is finally coming over to the bench to change and get ready to go in. Jean Antoine is taking his sweet time before he boots this one to the midfield. Poussayan, Gonzalez, can't connect with Solomon. Poussayan there to clean it up. Richard, Gonzalez, back for eventually Conte. This one goes out of play. 
Looks like Richard Forca has slid over to where Elmer Villatoro was on the back line as Conte comes into the center back position. Con that's more Conte's natural position, the center back out of Sierra Leone. Espinal got around the defender. Making a long pass here. Forca making a run. Madad leaves it for him. Forca into the box and it deflects off a body going for a corner kick. Maryland has been creating their chances here in this 70th minute to 79th minute of action. Out swinging corner, rising to the edge. Conte can't meet it with a header. Chattanooga clears the danger. Solomon escorts it to the touchline and out of play. The ball went underneath the Chattanooga bench and Solomon hopped over the metal bench to go grab it. He'll leave the throw in for Philip Burnett. Solomon, heavy touch, loses control of the ball. Burnett gets it right back for Maryland. 80th minute of action. Does Maryland have a bit of late game heroics here to tie the contest? Gonzalez. Not that many options developing. Goes back for Mohamed Conte. Gonzalez back into the back line area. Back for Conte. Along the touchline, gives it away. Looks like the first substitute with his penny off is Sebastian Capazucci. I'm not sure if he's going to come in just yet as he's put his orange penny back on. Gonzalez, and he did not touch that one last, goes for the throw in. Long for Solomon. Prepolito uses his height to get to the ball first. Pops it up into the air. Solomon wins this header. Madad pokes it beyond. Prepolita using body position gets around and they're gonna rule that that was a foul on Yunus Madad. That is certainly a interpretation of events. Goals from Nagelstad and Mwape have Chattanooga FC in control of this contest. First goal of the contest was from Darwin Espinal. Chattanooga has since scored two unanswered as of yet. As Jean Antoine pokes this one to the offensive midfield, Conte rises to meet it. Espinal leaves a header off. Stripling is the first one there. Gonzalez. Now Forca teams up with Mansour to keep the ball for the Bobcats. Touch goes long for Conte. Alex Cow not thrilled with that backline play. As Chattanooga leaves the throw in duties for Colin Stripling. Foul again on the play. This one goes in favor of Maryland as Juan Luis. Nagelsad's going to harass Sutton into making a decision. Pass goes for Forca. Forca playing wing back position this time as opposed to his normal center back in the Maryland lineup. With the injury to Villatoro and Mohamed Conte being more of a natural center back. He'll slide into the wing area. Espinal looking to create some chances here. Espinal slides in for Brissain. One touch pass. Espinal taken away. Pass back, Juan Luis. Juan Luis and Philip Burnett battling for position. No foul is awarded. Uh, Manuel Gonzalez was looking around to make sure. No whistle went, we play on. Espinal, chests it down to his feet for Pierre Richard. Richard looking for either Forca Long ball over the bar. Substitute is going to come on. Lionel Alvarenga will be replaced by Sebastian Capazucci. As Capazucci is from Via Alamena, Chile. He started his professional career with New York Cosmos B in 2016. Then moved on to Italy for three seasons in Serie D or Series D. Playing for Troina in Group I of 2017, Paterno on loan in 2018, and Marina di Ragusa in 2018 and 19. 
Series D in Italy is considered non-professional, and it has nine divisions spread across the country. And Kabazuchi is used to moving. He lived in Argentina, Chile, and Guatemala all before the age of nine. Kabazuchi and his family then moved to New Jersey, where he attended Memorial High School in West New York, New Jersey, because American towns just love their directional names. A foul right at midfield. Nets Chattanooga the ball. Alvarengo was on a yellow card, as it looks like Marco Sotorello is getting set to come in next for Maryland. He'll be their fifth substitute as Chattanooga just makes their first. Looks like there's no urgency on Chattanooga's side to make any other changes. Forco teamed up to take the ball away with Gonzalez. Gonzalez sends the boss along the touchline. Perez boots it over Forca. Forca pokes it back for Matsor. As Chattanooga has it again. Bobcats running out of time here to tie this contest and steal points from the league leaders. Antoine boots it all the way up. Forca, a header. Foul given. Maryland keeps control of the ball. Pass all the way across for Mohamed Conte. Conte will cross the midfield line. Burnett has to come up and meet it. Juan Luis tripped him and going to ground. This will net the foul at the edge of the midfield third. Maryland opts to take it quickly and just keep going on the press. Gonzalez across for Forca. Forca, Madad making a run at it, can't get there. And instead escorted out of play by Aiden Bowers. Looks like substitute is going to come on here. Marco Sotorello. Sotorello will come on to replace Pierre Richard. So three midfield changes, a defensive change, and one change at striker. Has Maryland through five substitutes. Chattanooga's only made one. Header here, Prusayan can't handle it. Dixon's got it. Dixon running through the line. Mansoor bodies him off the ball and makes a nice play on it. Sutton makes the throw. Sotorello, his first touch, he goes for Espinal. Espinal cuts back to the middle of the field. Looking for Madad. Amos Madad is taken to ground by Perez. He's surrounded by two Chattanooga players. Last went off of Maryland, it looks like, so Chattanooga gets the throw in. The visitors from Tennessee are looking to steal six out of a six possible points against Maryland in their first two games of this season. A single free kick was all that separated them in Tennessee. And now here in Maryland, two plays of two plays of brilliance, one from Nagelstad to tap at home and one from Kelvin and Wape. As a Chattanooga player is down on the field, Nagelstad's got the ball. It looks like Ryan D's gonna allow the players to keep going. Nagelstad making a run, gets around three and he's fouled at the edge of the area. And it looks like Chattanooga's physio is gonna have to come out here to tend to the following Luis Garcia Sosa. Foul was at the edge of the penalty area, so Chattanooga will have a chance at a free kick deep in their offensive end. As a little update from out of town, the Michigan Stars have added a second goal against Savannah Clovers. So the visitors next weekend to the Maryland Soccer Plex may be coming in on a losing streak. Currently, as results stand, Chattanooga would stay 
in first place with their potentially 23rd point if they can hold on here for three. Maryland, regardless of the outcome, would stay second place. They are eight points behind. Whereas Michigan, if they get the win tonight, would move into third place ahead of Albion San Diego. Meanwhile, to keep you just on the bottom of the table, uh, Flower City has still yet to win a contest this season with zero points. And Savannah has, their, has had their first win of the season earlier in the weeks. They have five points thanks to two draws. Their first win came against Club De Leon, who have impressed recently with two wins in their last run of play. As it looks like Garcia Sosa is holding his nose. Uh, nose injuries are never fun. He does have to come out temporarily, so Chattanooga will be playing with 10 for the moment. As it is a deep free kick here, it looks like Marcus Nagelstad is going to line up to take it. Nagelstad already has his sixth goal of the season earlier in today's contest, finishing off a nice passing play. As Chattanooga looks like they're content to not send anybody else into the box. It is the goal scorers Mwape and Nagelstad on this free kick against a four-person wall and Alex Sutton with no runners. Most of the other rest of the Chattanooga offense is up at the midfield line. Here's the whistle. Nagelstad boots it. Sutton makes a nice stop. High and long here, looking for friendly heads, and instead it's Prepolita with a lengthy, nice, strong kick all the way back to Alex Sutton. Entering the stoppage time minutes here, as we have now hit 90 minutes played. There was a lengthy pause before that free kick, so we'll see just how much time is added on by our fourth official, Rodrigo Hernandez. Sutton out adventurously to play that one, gets it deep into the midfield. Five minutes have been added. Espinal back for Forca. Does Maryland have a little bit of late magic here? Gonzalez making a run. Espinal looking for Burnett. Burnett cutting back to the mid, back back to the box. Mohamed Conte looking for a lengthy pass. Dixon meets it with a head. Nagelstad content to get it away. Juan Luis and ball angled off of him. Two substitutes look like they're going to come on for Chattanooga at the next opportunity as Conte runs down this ball that curled back into the field of play. Looks like Lenworth, Lopez, and Damian Rodriguez are going to be the ones that come in next. Long ball for Burnett off his chest. Downed by Stripling. And that was a high tackle as Burnett made, co Burnett made contact with Stripling's foot. And Stripling goes to check on him, but... As the assistant re one of the assistant referees is calling over... Wow, a yellow card has been shown to one of the assistant coaches for Maryland. All right, I'm not used to seeing that. As Gonzalez stands over the ball, looks like Nagelstad is going to be subbed off in favor of Lenny Lopez. Nagelstad comes off as Damian Rodriguez is going to come on as one of the Chattanooga players. Looks like he's down in the area as people were bodying for position for an expectant free kick, but that free kick has yet to arrive. I wonder how much of this is going to add to the stoppage time that was supposed to be five minutes, by the way. As here comes the physio for Chattanooga. This may really delay things here to end the game. So Lenny Lopez, the Rosedale, New York native, played all five played five seasons at Iona College, including twenty-one goals, with seven of them coming in twenty nineteen. 
He made it as far as the NCAA first round in 2019, where he and Iona lost to Maryland 4 0. He claims to model his game after Mesut Ozil, the recently retired German national known for his passing and offensive creativity who en from the wing, who ended up winning five German Player of the Year awards with the national team, including a World Cup, three FA Cups as well. Lopez lists Goodfellas as his favorite movie, and he is a dual citizen of the United States and Jamaica. Allegedly, there were going to be five minutes of stoppage time, but... Your guess is as good as mine as to how long this will actually take. As it looks like Chattanooga may be forced into making a third substitution as well here. As Luis Garcia Sosa comes off, Damian Rodriguez comes on, and Jungwoo So looks like he'll come on for Chattanooga as well at the first opportunity, which... I guess they're going to try to do now, taking off maybe the injured player. Yeah, your guess is as good as mine as to how long this game's actually going to go now. And while Gonzalez has been standing over this ball for what feels like a couple of minutes at this point, as Rodriguez finally comes on to the pitch. Rodriguez from Dalton, Georgia. He's His younger brother, Fabian, is also on the team. Damian Rodriguez is a product of the Chattanooga FC Youth Academy. Moved back to Dalton, Georgia to take part in the North Georgia Soccer Academy. He won two Georgia State Championships with Dalton High School in 2019 and 2021 as Jungwoo So enters the game, the sole South Korean native. Deep ball headed in, and Tuan makes the scoop, and he'll fall down on it. Juan Luis is the one who was subbed off in favor of Jung Woo So. So it looks like all, all substitutes that were going to be made have been made, as we are deep into stoppage time as Jean Antoine took his sweet time to make that kick. And Wape gets the head on the ball. Sotorello can't win possession. Here's So's first touch, gives it away to Forca. Madad for Forca. Forca deep along his touchline, and hard tackle, foul awarded. Maryland will keep the ball. We are definitely very late into the allotted five minutes that were supposed to be there. Last off of Chattanooga. Espinal's got the throw, and he will leave it off for Manuel Gonzalez. Espinal looking to create. Mwape boots it into the air. Chested down. Prepolita. Conte cuts off the pass. Mohamed Conte's touch goes a little long, and nicely done to get the ball back. Gonzalez finds Espinal. A couple of runners going into the box. Here comes the pass. Prepolito with a strong kick gets it out of there. Espinal bodies it down. Mwape has the ball. Lopez. He's body checked into the dirt, and Espinal is given a foul for it. As it looks like we're going to get the last substitution here for Chattanooga. Bringing on number 14, Hugo Martinez Rodriguez Jr. And taking off the goal scorer, Kelvin Mwape. So now the only original goal scorer still on the field is Darwin Espinal, as Nagelstad and Mwape have both been subbed off. Prepolita rolls the ball well forward of where the foul occurred. Chattanooga has sent players forward for the strong boot from the Moldovan. Ball is still in play and booted up into the stands. And Fan nearly makes a nice catch on it. Stripling walking slowly toward the site of this throw in. As we've now played over seven minutes of actual stoppage time of the allotted five. 
ball went out of play, and it'll be his goal kick here. Sutton has to take it fast. Manuel Gonzalez running after it. Your guess is as good as mine is when this game's actually going to be over. Gene Antoine chests it down. And he's going to force Maryland to come after him to pick it up. And he'll fall on top of it now. Gene Antoine's got to be careful here. He is on a yellow card. Antoine's really got to be careful here to not be shown red. Although, granted, it would just mean a late substitution at this point. For Espinal. Darwin looking to create. He's already got one goal today. Pass goes beyond and back of Sotorello. Taken away by Damian Rodriguez. Forca makes a nice steal. Deep pass into the box. Well long as Forca booted it and it went way wide. We've played now nine minutes of stoppage time. Five was allotted, and it was a long stop earlier. But we are now solely in the discretion of our match official, Ryan Nee. Antoine sends it into the midfield. Lopez wins the ball. Back for Mohamed Conte. Deep ball here. Maryland's got to start pushing more forward. They're running low on minutes. Espinal has it at the wing. Espinal gets around a trip attempt. Looking for Gonzalez. Forca's got it. Haddad. Few options developing into the header, and Philip Burnett turns it toward goal and out of play. Now Jean Antoine. We'll line up for this goal kick. Antoine will reposition the ball. Deep pass, and that's the end of the ball game. Chattanooga gets the final whistle after over 100 minutes of play as two fast strikes from Marcus Nagelstad and Kelvin Mwape wipe out the opening goal from Darwin Espinal, and Chattanooga takes all three points. A rough and tumble contest tonight as Maryland now falls to 5-0-3 oh, on the young season, whereas Chattanooga remains unbeaten. They move to 6-7-2-0 no, and zero, with their 23rd point to go 11 north of Maryland. Our next home contest will be a matchup against the Savannah Clovers FC visiting from Georgia. So Maryland will come into that game at 4-0-3, looking to win another match before going out on the road to California for two matchups with Albion San Diego and the Los Angeles Force. We're making a quick trip to Michigan to visit Gold Star FC Detroit. Thank you so much for joining us on this Saturday night. Your final score from Maureen Hendricks Stadium, Chattanooga FC 2, the Maryland Bobcats 1.